Hello everyone, my name is Raging Raptor and welcome to a new World of Tanks video. And today we've got once again a packed video. We are going to talk about several different things, leading with the sandbox announcement, the black market, a new marathon coming up, and update 1.12. Let's just start with the sandbox announcement. And here, oh boy, Wargaming treated us with a bombshell. HE shell changes will come on Monday sandbox. And then we'll have crew 2.0, artillery changes, and a final stage where everything is getting tested together. That is huge. And I didn't expect it to be this quick. Before we go into what we know so far, I want to point out that we, the CCs, content creators, as well as community contributors, were able to participate in a closed stage test. I was participating with Parim, Necromium and Sugan in the closed HE shell test. There were also some content creators, which I think was Ducky and Myland, which did the HE changes. And there was also a closed artillery change. However, there I wasn't divided because already the HE shell changes and they wanted to, you know, do some things in between. That is nice, honestly. That's an applause for Wargaming and a big thank you for them for letting us, the CCs, participate in a more than an, I think it was a two hour long session where we had a, a real PowerPoint presentation like I'm doing right now from Alexin uh, to show us what we have to do or not what we have to do, what are the changes, what are the plans, why we are doing those HE changes. I am going to wait to do a proper video on how the HE changes work because I want to see if anything changed from the iteration we've played to the current iteration because this was like one month ago. And anyway, it is a very cool feature to see that we got invited into such a close test. The basic idea of the HE changes is to decrease the damage they do when they not penetrate well armored vehicles. That is a fairly interesting take and it will help making tanks a little bit stronger again, you know. I've played the VK7501K a lot as you might have seen during my streams. I mauled it quite hard because fuck that tank. The thing is though, an SU ISU-152 can just shoot at my turret and deal 400 damage, which is kind of ridiculous with HE, you know. No aiming, no luck needed, just I can do the same thing and do like 200 damage on an enemy heavy. Just <laughs> no aiming, no nothing, just <laughs> 200. And that thing gets even worse when you go into higher tiers. A 60TP can shoot at the mouse's turret, dealing 400 damage and maybe even burning the mouse. Those are the things Wargaming wants to change with the HE changes. And we'll see how this is going to turn out. Again, on Monday, we'll have a look at that. Then we also have the artillery changes. Apparently they want to reduce the stun time, which is a nice feature. I will see will, how this is going. They want to make the traces more accurate. Not more accurate, they want to make them more visible. I don't really like this change because this could lead to a good RT player just dominating the battlefield on a, on a map like Prokhorovka, where they're just, you know, countering the enemy RT and boom, you won basically. And they want to introduce an RT lamp, an RT sixth sense showing you, yo, already just fired at roughly your location, move. Which is a nice feature, I would say. It's an interesting feature and we'll see how that goes. And lastly, Crew 2.0. A lot of people are scared about this change. How is it going to affect their hard, well-trained crews? People, and I understand that. I'll be looking forward to, however, to this crew change and I hope that it will not be such a shit show as it is in World of Warships and at World of Tanks console at the moment because they have some shit shows. And I think Wargaming cannot, or like World of Tanks, cannot um, take such a shit show as well. We'll see. Again, this is sandbox. Nothing which is tested right here can come to this live server like this. And this is very, very important. During my 10,000 sub stream, we talked about that a lot. Feedback. I like feedback. Wargaming likes feedback. Those sandbox, Dwight and Heat Resistant BFG reiterated. Give feedback, 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 feedback of all those changes. But yeah, on Monday, we are going to have a look at those revisited HE shell mechanics. And most likely on Tuesday, I will give you a proper review of those changes with a proper explanation, where I will also give you the feedback I gave Wargaming back then during that closed beta test. I 
invite you to join me on my twitch.tv slash raging rap there during mondays afternoons at 13 o'clock cet it will be a german stream however but as you know i don't have a problem zwischen den beiden sprachen zu wechseln to switch between those two languages so feel free and kommt vorbei join me <laughs> wargaming will also handsomely reward you for your progress on the sandbox server there will be five different missions you can do with a sixth final mission and all of those missions will give you certain tokens and those tokens are there for you to exchange on the live server for some nice and well deserved reward it can be premium days it can be personal reserves for credits which are great for the upcoming frontline when it finally comes back for other personal reserves like you know, <coughs> crew XP, normal XP, free XP, some decals, and even 2D styles, which you can also get just for playing. You don't even need to exchange them for tokens. So that is a very, very nice thing, and it's, I think, a lot more than what we had before. Now, let's have a look at the next big thing in the room, the elephant in the room. Or should I rather say, the bald guy in a black coat in the room, the black market. During our 10k stream, the both Wargaming employees said, no, we do not know anything about the black market. As you probably know, it is against our will that they are doing this black market, huh? Obviously, it's totally PR and it's a little bit of making some tension. It's all right. Thing is, apparently on what Express, one of the devs may dropped a hint where they said, yeah, on the 26th of February, uh, a very important football match stops or the Champions League stops or something like that, something in that regard. So people started to talk about, hmm, 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 maybe may this be when the black market starts, 25th, 26th, you know, something on in that direction, maybe. The thing is, last year, the black market started <coughs> in this time frame, in February. The year before, the black market was in May. So, I do think though that Wargaming wants to make the black market as quick as possible to sap out all those credits from the Christmas event, the Christmas special. Thing is, they will probably again auction. You have to decide yourself how much you want to bet. And one other thing, you might have seen a list floating around. And this list is a big thing. Because it is back in November, got leaked. And the author of the Daily Bounce, as I, as well as I do, we talk, both say that it's bullshit. You can't really leak a list for an event which is like four months in the future. Especially a, a, a feature or an event which is known to have last minute changes. The only leak you can 100% you know, agree on or count on is the one which happens three minutes before the thing changes. Three minutes before the black market auction or the black market um, offer changes. Because smart people, which I'm not when it comes to programming, can intercept the information stream going to the client. And in this information stream, if it is not encrypted, you can, well, pull out and read what tank will come in the black market, giving us a tiny, tiny heads up. That's the only leak you can trust on. However, this was the 2019 list. And you can see a pretty decent chunk of premiums and even tier 10s for 20 millions plus. So if you want to have one of those tier 10s, and I do think that maybe one of those will come again, consider getting some more credits in the remaining weeks. I did it myself. I started to grind some credits out. I have now 21 million and I will do more. I want to have at minimum 30 millions. You know, you never know. You never know in those situations. But there was a pretty chunk, decent chunk of premium tanks for credits as well. The Bulldog is very decent. Carnarvon Action X is a progress tank. It's a very good tank. Panzer 5 4 for gold. Was expensive, but really good. IS-6B and T-34B. Meh. In 2020, we had the Lance and C. That thing is amazing. So that will be nice. We had the Chrysler K, which was um, uh, for an auction, which was going just for 3 million, which is nice. They can... Then we had the Canavan Action X for gold again, sadly, this time no credits. The Panzer 58B, so we are going to see some more black tanks, most likely. We'll, we will see black market, black tanks because that's just the theme of the black market. Maybe we're going to see orders for the 279 missions. I don't hope so, but who knows. Maybe we'll see more 3D styles. There are 3D styles around which aren't sold yet. Maybe some more low tiers. Maybe again the SU-76i. Maybe again the Type 59G <coughs> in an auction. 
Who knows? Who knows? But again, I think that the Fosch 155 will either come in the bond shop or in the black market. The, the, the Fosch wasn't in last year, so it would make sense to try to sell it again. This tank is not game breaking. It's not. If Wargaming thinks this tank would be game breaking, they, uh, they would have removed it for good. And that thing isn't strong. It has its strong suit, which is 2350 burst, or two, yeah, 2350 in 10 seconds. However, the gun is atrociously inaccurate. The tank doesn't really have good armor because of the huge cupola, this, this, and the lower plate. <laughs> the gun traverse angles are doo doo, and the mobility is meh. So, yeah. Another thing might be very interesting the Object 268 version 5, either Bond Shop or maybe in the black market. You know why? Because <laughs> some people on What Express said suddenly super terraces are starting to play this tank again. And that's always a little bit of a giveaway for something coming up with such a vehicle. Mm hmm. And we'll have another example for that in just a few minutes. That thing would be cool. It's it's an OG tank. It is being it has been sold on a Chinese server, but not anymore. Because it's under new management. We're also going to talk about this in just a sec. The thing is, this thing is not OP. This thing is by no means OP. It's basically like uh, an E4, but bad. You know, it has bad gun handling. It's it's fast though. It has okay-ish armor, but it's nothing really to home write home about. It's just uniqueness. And I once again want to say, and this is very, very important, Wargaming understands that. A lot of players don't want to have OP tanks. They want to have unique tanks, novelty ve vehicles, which are okay. They don't have to be OP. They can be good, like the Caro. I still consider the Caro da Compartimento 45T is a, is a good vehicle. And it's a novelty vehicle, but it's by no means OP or anything. But it's definitely something what we, as the player base, wants to have. Even the competitive player base. And this thing is a purely a novelty vehicle. A unique novelty vehicle. So we'll see what this is going to happen. Next up we have a 122TM Challenge Marathon. Yeah, it was to be expected that something is going to happen on February 12th. You know why? Last year already something happened. And it was for the Chinese New Year. Or rather, last year when that date was. And this year, Wargaming decided to give the Chinese tech tree a brand new medium tank. And um, again, it makes totally sense. On Friday, the February the 12th, there is the Chinese New Year for the Year of the Ox. So Wargaming has this new vehicle, the 122TM. And before you say, but Raging, the Chinese server has still the old thingamajings, you know? It's thingamabob, it's, it's still 9.22. No, not 9.22. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They updated it. It's under new management, so they have the same server, that, or not the same server, but the same update cycle as we do. So they have this vehicle. And what would be best to market the Chinese New Year? Make a new premium tank, which people can grind out. Let them be at home, you know, lockdown and stuff. But yeah, 122 TM. This also makes a lot, lot of sense that this thing will come. Because I just mentioned with the Object 268 version 5. If Wargaming employees or super testers are playing a vehicle, chances are that soon it will come. You can do the same thing with us CCs, by the way. You can do the same thing. You, you can look into our into our tree and see, mm, wait, what the fuck is that tank? Why does he drive that? It's new. Okay, probably soon TM, something is coming. That's not the case with the 122 TM on my account. But now, let's have a look at my good old friend, the Felix, which is a Wargaming employee with the one with, what? Scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah, got them. Let's do this. It's a little bit faster. And oh, what's this? Some people would say Uvu. Notice that, and it's a 122 TM. That's a pretty good win rate. I guess he got just lucky, but he played that thing. So chances are pretty decently high that this is a very, very true leak that we are going to get this marathon. This thing itself. Trash DPM, okay -ish gun handling, 400 alpha, 233 APCR pen with 300 millimeters of heat pen, 8 degrees of gun depression, 120 millimeters of armor on the upper front plate, 80 on the side, 
almost 300 on the turret with two cupolas. Damn. And good mobility. Damn. That looks interesting as hell. I'm, I'm sup I will be interested to see how this tank is going to perform. But yeah, in my opinion, that leak about the marathon coming uh, on the 12th sounds very logical. So keep your eyes peeled. Maybe stalk my, my account, maybe stalk me and see what we can do. If you see this tank on my account, then you will know, yep, Raging Raptor was correct and we are going to have a look at this tank soon. And lastly, let's talk about update 1.12. And this is another leak. And I heard a lot of stuff about this as well and I had my own personal um, information about this. There will be soon a common test about this. And apparently at the beginning of March, we will get this update. <coughs> it will probably introduce things about Expedition 2021, which is the joint program of, as you probably know, um, Frontline and Steel Hunter, with Steel Hunter getting, going to go first and Frontline afterwards. We don't know yet what exactly will be on Tier 9 reward. There are a lot of Tier 9 rewards which could be around. Judas 3 Alt 3, Stritzwagen K, Object 752, the K91PT, the Cobra, the Lorraine and the Kunze Panzer. However, the Kunze Panzer will most likely be the ranked reward because it's very unique and it has a unique mechanic to it. So yeah, that's about that. However, update 1.12 will also bring the new battle pass with it having three different tanks, a heavy, a medium and a tank destroyer, apparently. And some revised mechanic. And lastly for update 1.12, I have a little sneak preview from our 10k stream. Apparently Wargaming is working on a revisitation or rework of the customization. And that is amazing. Why is customization so important for World of Tanks? Because it's the best way to monetize the game. A good looking camo is not going to make the tank OP, you know? A 3D style is not going to make the tank OP. So you can make 3D styles all the way you want and that is okay. However, the big problem right now is, and then the big problem a lot of people have, is that those 3D styles which we can get from Clan Wars, like the Chieftain 3D style right here, or the one for the Super Conqueror, or whatever the, f whatever the hell you're buying, you see, whatever, loot boxes. You basically cannot do anything with them, you know? They always look the same. They look most of the time rather good. Like, I hate this tank, but the 3D style looks great. I like this tank and a lot of people hate this tank, but the skin looks nice. It even has a little mustache with a monocle. That's cool. You see, this is the only thing you can do with 3D styles. This is the only customization you can do. Literally, the only thing. You can only use progressive decals. Like, what the hell? That's nothing. That's, that's no for customization, you know? And that is the biggest problem I have and that's the biggest problem a lot of people have as well. The style itself on the Super Conqueror looks great, but the camouflage underneath is boring as hell. Plus, this is literally a green block in, a, in for example, a Swedish map, you know? It's, it's white. It, it should be white. Why is it green? That makes no sense, you know? And that's, it gets even worse when you look at the Stritzwagen. This thing is just green. That thing would just pop out like it's nobody's business because it doesn't have a camouflage underneath it. And that is, for example, why the Kampfpanzer 50T looks so freaking gorgeous because basically the 3D style is the base code, you know? That is why it looks so cool in my opinion. That is why you basically can... This is literally what I want to have as a 3D style. Me being able to age pick an already chosen color or do this myself, because that looks so cool in my opinion. And then I can put my emblem on, my, my trademarked raptor head, you know? Why I call myself Roaring Raptor and later Raging Raptor. That looks so cool. I really like this. It's the same with the Shuffle to 4 a little bit. You also have parts like this lying around which are not getting changed. And apparently, again, we can look forward to this. And the same goes, for example, the mouse. Everybody has that style and everybody looks the same, you know? For example, why not allow us to maybe remove the gun? Add emblems, you know? The same with this. Or maybe give us a different color. Maybe I don't want to have this weird looking color, like this um, prototype color, but I want to have a mo my own color, you know? 
some what I used before. Maybe this 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 one right here or this one right here, which maybe looks shit, but who knows, you know? If they would implement this, that would be great, I feel like. It might not have big priority, but it would be amazing. And one final thing I want to point out. Wargaming is already working a lot with those things, with those um, 3D styles or styles in general. See? We have an adjustable style here, right here. We can even put emblems on or numbers with special styles. That is cool. I don't even know if a lot of people are using them, but that is nice. And the other thing is, Wargaming showed it again with the styles which you have right here. You can adjust them for a different color. It's not a big change, but it's a change nevertheless. So that is nice. So yeah, I'll be looking forward to update 1.12 if they're going to do or if they're going to do a proper revamp of the customization system. Maybe we're also getting something about the bonds because they teased us with that as well. But that's literally it. That's everything I have for update 1.12 and we have to keep our eyes peeled as well. Anyway, that's everything I'm having for you today. Don't forget to subscribe and give me some feedback. I'm really looking forward to all those changes. It will be interesting to see how the sandbox is going to pan out. As mentioned, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give me and Wargaming feedback. And I'll see you around. Bye-bye.